Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 03636 59 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Foundation is the support of a building. It is a part of a building usually below the ground and therefore it becomes unseen. It is that part of the building that transfers and distributes the weight of the building onto the ground. It is also said to be the basis on which something is founded either as a theory or an idea. The foundation of a building is very critical to the structural stability and longevity of the building. Solid foundations do not come up on their own. Solid foundations don't just evolve they are usually laid. Two things are very crucial in laying a foundation. The quality of the material of construction and the competence of the personnel laying the foundation. This is the crucial segment of your life during which you are laying foundations for your future. I would like you to know that everything you are doing now, there are still foundations. Everything that is happening to you now, they are foundational issues. And that's why we sense it is very crucial that God begins to help us to look at how to lay a solid foundation when we recognize that where you are now, what you are doing now, this present segment of your life, actually, the only thing that's very critical about it is that it is the time to lay foundations. And because of the crucial segment, in which you are now, you are actually laying foundations for your future. The foundation of your marriage, the foundation for your, ma for your career, and the foundation for your entire life is being laid now. I must say that the foundation for your destiny, and indeed, the foundation for your eternity, is being laid as we are sitting here now. The unfortunate thing is that most young men and women are not careful how they lay these indispensable foundations. Several have laid very weak and very faulty foundations for their lives while they were young and they are now seeking remedial means to support a crumbling and a hopeless future. May that never be your lot in the name of Jesus Christ. You are a man of the future. Tell somebody by your side, say, you are not a man of the past. You are a man of the future. You are a woman of the future. Tell him again that the future is ahead of you. Most of your days lie ahead of you. There are not many issues 
to look back to as yet. Hence, you must maximize the future that God has ahead of you. I would like you to know that what lies behind you is very, very small compared with where you are going. Everything that has happened to you is that too. I want to say with boldness that they are very, very little compared with where you are going. And so you cannot continue to celebrate a past that is not too significant. Neither can you waste your time mourning for a past that can be easily corrected now, now so that the future can find expression for you. So during this meeting, we are trusting God that it will lead you to maximize the days ahead of you, your future. And by the grace of God, we shall celebrate you in the coming days in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to tell somebody that your generation will celebrate you in the name of Jesus. If he doesn't believe it, tell him that, do you know that my generation will celebrate me in due course? Hallelujah. Many issues that you will face in life, like professional or occupational challenges, marital challenges, social challenges, leadership challenges, and spiritual challenges in future, require laying solid foundations now if you are not going to meet them unprepared. This is the body for this year's National Student Congress. We sense you are being set up by God for exploits in your generation. When we ask you to come here, it's because God has spoken concerning you to our hearts. We, we have we've seen that you're a proper child. We sense that God has a very critical and glorious program and plan for your life. And we sense, and this is a very, very deep understanding in our hearts, that God is setting you up for exploits. In the name of Jesus Christ. And it is for this purpose that you must lay solid foundation for excellence in life. You are too young to make do with a patch up life when you can lay a solid foundation for the heights. Tell somebody, I'm going for the heights. I'm not going to settle down for casualties. Who is planning for casualties here? Let me see their hand up. They are not in this meeting. They did not attend this meeting. Because this meeting are for men of excellence, women of the heights. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are trusting that in the course of these days, God will show you how to lay solid foundations for every aspect of your life spiritually academically maritally and in every in everything hallelujah now laying a solid foundation requires considerable digging and excavation of surface earth materials that cannot carry the load of the building later you will do well to allow god to dig deep into your life in this meeting and excavate all that are detrimental to laying solid foundations today so that you can put in the materials of gold 
of silver and of precious stone that will last, last, and last until you fulfill God's purpose for you in your generation and at least in the next generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Indeed, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Foundations strongly laid or weakly built will bring a colossal ruin to all you build thereupon. Any other damage to any other part of a building has a limited loss, but not a damaged foundation. We want to ask you to be wise as we sit together in the course of this meeting. We want you to grab this opportunity with much prayer and much desire from God have we asked you to come and we want you to please settle down and as we face the realities of what God will be dealing with the digging of of the ordinary earth the excavation of rubbish so that we can get to the right point at which the Holy Spirit will be laying foundations may the Lord grant you grace and grant you courage and openness because of where you are going in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> May I ask you for this brief moment, you will turn your Bible now. You will turn your Bible now. Uh, for this night, even though there are so much I felt we could begin with, but I want to begin with a divine declaration. There's a declaration for you. There's a declaration over your head. I was amazed as I was preparing for this opening charge. And the way the Holy Spirit was guiding my heart that he wants to bring, be, be, begin this meeting on a positive declaration what God has said concerning you. There's something God has declared concerning you which I want to agree with God over. There may be many, many issues. There may be many, many wrong things. There may be much rubbish that the devil is trying to rubbish your life with. But that notwithstanding, God has taken a stand over you. And God's counsel over your life will come to pass. Whatever the devil has done, and whatever he has thought he can do, heaven has arisen on your behalf. Your future is settled in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to read. The passage may appear strange, but that's how God wants me to start this meeting tonight. I want to begin it with divine declaration. Isaiah 28. I want you to turn your Bibles all to Isaiah 28. And in Isaiah 28, I read verse 14, verse 15, verse 16, verse 17, verse 18, verse 19, verse 20. I'm reading Isaiah 28, 14 to 20. God's declaration, God's commitment, God's determination to give you a future, to give you victory, and to make you an exploit among your own generation. Verse 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, Ye scornful men that rule these people which is in Jerusalem. Because you have said, 
we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement when the overflowing scourge shall pass through it shall not come unto us for we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood have we hid ourselves therefore thus says the lord god behold i lay in zion for a foundation a stone a tried stone a precious cornerstone a sure foundation he that believes shall not make haste judgment also will i lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the waters shall overflow the hiding place and your covenant with death shall be disannulled and your agreement with hell shall not stand when the overflowing scourge shall pass through then you shall be trodden by it from the time that it goes forth it shall take you money by money shall it pass by by day and by night and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report for the bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on it and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it thus says the lord I want you to listen very attentively tonight. I actually am not going to preach. I just want to announce God's declaration over your life. As many of you as God has brought under this uh, ministry of the word of God, today and in the course of these days there's a declaration a divine declaration over your life you are going to walk in it you are going to experience it you will grow into it in the name of Jesus Christ And this declaration, it was a discussion in the heavenlies. Many, many years ago, there has been a declared battle over the lives, especially of the young people. When we first started Student Congress, I remember the first opening charge battle for the young. But that battle that had been raging over the lives, especially of the young people, is a battle between heaven and hell. Everything that has spoiled in any place, in any generation, in any country has always been when the devil has been able to capture the young people. When the devil has been able to maneuver and turn the hearts of the young people for his own exploitation. There's nothing you can do. The future will become bleak and hopeless. 
And as our days are unfolding, you find that the battle is becoming more and more fierce for the young. The things that you do not expect a young person to be grappling with right as early as possible the enemy is confronting your generation with a very fierce a very very wicked devouring strategy as if to wipe off whatever could have been a foundation for righteousness in the coming days. And I saw as if God has arisen to do something deliberate. And your generation, heaven is going to fight for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Many, many people, many, many elders have lost hope. Many have thrown in the towel. Many have concluded that there's not going to be anything to be done. But as I stand in God's presence, I hear him say, no. No, I'm going to raise a standard. I'm going to do something that will stop this decay. Hallelujah. So as I make this declaration, as I see the Lord asking me to do that, because you are directly involved, you are directly a part of the recipients of what God is about to do. And I'd like you to please put this somewhere at the back of your mind. Even in 10 years time, in 20 years time, as you will be breaking forth in life, this covenant, this declaration God is making over your head, we keep standing, money by money, by day and by night. Anywhere you go in life, heaven will fight for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord. Ye scornful men that rule these people which is in Jerusalem. You see, the discussion, I say, is an heavenly matter. He was addressing the yeast comfort men which rule these people, which is in Jerusalem. Hear the word of the Lord. What have they said? Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death. That's what the devil is boasting about. That they have made covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement. You can see the, the aggression with which wickedness seems to be riding. You can see the aggression with which the prince of darkness seem to want to ravage the land and ravage the nations. You can see the aggressiveness with which the prince of darkness is seeming to want to overwhelm and consume the entire earth by grabbing the youth. That aggressiveness has been so much propagated on the media 
the internet, the cable networks, every media facility had been captured and being used as if the whole purpose of God will be engulfed. And I see Satan saying, yes, we have made covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement. When you see the gay movement, they are so aggressive that it will appear as if anybody dare say no to it, you will be in trouble. Wickedness is jeering at anybody who seeks to stand for righteousness. Such that even on campuses, several things are beginning to happen that is making it look as if it will not be possible for righteousness to prevail anymore. When you see sophisticated advancement of error and of wicked designs, it will appear as if, oh, can we ever have men and women that will survive these days? But hear the word of the Lord. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death. And with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. No, that's what they are saying. They are saying that we, we have made lies our refuge. They are saying that under falsehood, they have hid themselves. And so they are saying, when the power of God is coming, it will not touch us. When the prince of peace is passing, he will not be able to do anything. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation. A stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste, but other versions say, shall not be put to shame, shall not be confounded. I will spend a bit of time looking at that foundation God is talking about. But before I come to look at it, let me finish that declaration. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believes shall not make haste. When you want to check who is that stone that God is talking about, who is that stone that God is talking about? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know that the foundation that God has laid and is laying will deal with all the manipulation, all the wickedness, all the covenant, all the agreement we held and it will scatter and shatter them in the name of Jesus Christ. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummets and the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. You remember they said we have made 
lies our refuge. We are under, we are hiding ourselves under falsehood. That was the declaration from the kingdom of darkness. But here God saying, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies. And the waters shall overflow the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be what? Shall be dishonored, shall be cancelled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then you shall be trodden down by it in the name of Jesus Christ. From the time that it goes forth, it shall take you. I told you that this is a declaration from above. You wonder why am I reading it to you? It's because that is God's position over your case. I am not afraid of all the storms around your life. You will come out of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, you came into this meeting wobbly. And I see the kingdom of darkness is saying, this one, it can't go far. Our covenant over him is covenant of death. We have agreed with hell that he will not survive it. But I want to say to you tonight, thus says the Lord, I lay in Zion for a foundation. There's a foundation for your victory. There's a foundation for your deliverance. There's a foundation. A foundation. A sure foundation that anyone who believes, the Bible said, he shall not do what? He will not make haste. From that time, from the time that he goes forth, he shall overtake these scoff scoffers who are shouting, who are saying, yes, we are in charge of these lives. They shall be overtaken in the name of Jesus Christ. Money by money shall it pass over, by day and by night. And the Bible says it will be a vexation only to understand the report. And as I'm reading that, my heart jumps. That when the report of what God will be doing by your life and through your life, when the report shall get to hell, it will be a vexation. Satan will be under terrible vexation. He will be so much confused. He will wonder, where are these kind of young men coming who are causing all my covenant, all my arrangement to scatter and to be flushed off? It shall be a vexation just to understand the report. Because the hiding place will have been swept away. Said so the bed will be shorter and a man can stretch himself on it. And the covering will be too narrow that any man could wrap himself in it. Thus says the Lord. I have finished the declaration I want to make tonight. I will soon begin to pray over that on your behalf. I just feel that the Holy Spirit will have me begin this meeting this year by setting that agenda over your head. By setting that divine arrangement over your life. God is laying a foundation and you are part of that foundation. Shortly before the Lord Jesus Christ will appear. 
there's going to be a fresh manifestation of the glory of God that will sweep men and bring in the harvest. And those of you sitting before me today, you have a critical part to play in that. Even though everything looks as if it's going down the drain, there will arise a generation of young men and women by whose hand God will demonstrate his glory in this world. The covenant the devil thought he had made with death his agreement with hell that he thought now we can just sweep everything over shall be swept away. It shall be disannulled. And that by this thing that God is saying, God is going to vex his enemy one more time. But why am I declaring this here before you? Because God is saying, this generation of young men and women that I'm bringing to you, they are that generation that I'm laying a foundation upon their lives for this kind of assignment. So I will be asking God to do everything within his power to set you apart to lay that foundation for the kind of assignment that several of you will be stepping into in different areas of life not only on the pulpit alone in different aspects in academics in engineering, in ICT, where the devil currently thinks he is sitting and is controlling and is grabbing, God is going to knock him off by your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. There are theories that Satan had released into, into the world for some years that has continued to upturn the generations, has continued to bring about this kind of corruption and decay that we are grappling with. And I see the devil rejoice and say, yes, we have made lies our refuge. Under falsehood, we have hidden ourselves. When the overflowing scourge is passing, do not come near us. We have found a way to insulate ourselves. I see him thinking, I say, yes. I have put my hand here, I put my hand here, I put my hand there, I put my hand there. There is no how anything can overthrow me. But to that boast of the devil, I hear God saying, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation. So I'd like to begin by thanking God with you tonight. And I would like you to please stand with me now because that's the first thing I want to do before I can release you. I want to thank God for you. I want you to stand up on your feet. I want you to lift up your hands to heaven. I want you to say to God, Lord, thank you for your plan for me. Thank you for your thoughts towards me. Thank you that I'm alive at a time like this. Thank you for what you are about to do with me in my generation. Father, Thank you for what you are declaring concerning my life, concerning the coming days. Parakashando Roboscori. 
Risata ya katoro boshanda ba 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 ba. Rako si ba ruka sanda ya katoro boshi. Biri ba santa karobo su ba ba shara. Oga karamo sanda ya katoro basu. Merika sando ko shinda karuba saila. Bakata sando robo shinda ba 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 ba. Rako sando robo shinda ba 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 ba. For the the children of God have given me there for signs and there for wonders. For signs and for wonders. For signs and for wonders, I want you to particularly say to God, "I thank you for what you are doing for me." Let me inform you that whatever the devil has done, whatever trap he has set for your life, it shall be swept over. You are a special child, born. To bring about an exploit in this generation. Reko somba raba shanda bakuri masalibo robos mesheto yoro bosunda karuba sanda raba shidi. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus. Please lift those hands. Just lift it up before God. Lord, I thank you this night. I thank you, Lord, for what your spirit is declaring concerning these young men and ladies. I thank you for the destiny that you are setting for them. I thank you for these seven thousands that have not bowed their knees. I thank you, O oh God, that out of this host shall arise a mighty army that will march throughout the, the length and breadth of the earth. Causing your divine purpose to be accomplished, yeah. dislodging in the refuge of lies of Satan, yeah. nullifying his covenant of death, yeah. and scattering his agreement with hell. Yeah. Thank you, Father, that you have risen. Thank you that you have spoken a word unto your enemy. You have declared a war, a battle against your enemy. And we know you are going to win it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you that these men are arrows. Arrows in your quiver. With them, Lord, you are going to speak with your enemies at the gates. You are going to roll mighty victory by their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. You are going to reset the agenda of our generation by their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. By their lives, O oh God, your son Jesus shall be glorified. Lord, by their lives, by their lives and by their hands, that move of your spirit that you are speaking about shall be given great expression. Not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. In the name of Jesus! Father, I see a mighty army arising from here. An unstoppable army of righteousness. An unquenchable fire for the love of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, how you chose these lives 
we don't understand. How your love and your mercy located each one of these lives is beyond our explanation. All we stand here to say this night is thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for victory is yours already. Thank you, Jesus. Please, put your hand together with somebody and just thank God for him. Say, I thank God for you. You're going, we are going to celebrate you in this generation. Just tell him again. Just tell him again. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 76811. Nine eight. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. That for the combat that God himself is engaging in, I notice that for God to achieve it, what he says is that I lay in Zion for a foundation. And as I was looking at what God is saying, I lay in Zion for a foundation it's a, a stone a tri stone a precious cornerstone a sure foundation my mind immediately goes what is talking about and in the new testament immediately you will find first peter talking about jesus being that cornerstone being that precious cornerstone that tried stone that sure foundation that he who believes will not in any way make haste or be put to shame or be confounded I found that for the days to come, God is not just beating about the bush. He said, I lay in Zion for a foundation. It grips my heart immediately. That's ah. So when God wants to do a great thing on the earth, what he does is to lay a foundation for it. When God wants to confront his enemy, what he does is not to be running up and down. It's to do what? It's to lay a solid, a sure foundation for it. What God is about to use your life for is what is making him to decide to do what? To lay a strong, a sure foundation for it. Where God wants to go with your life, the extent to which God wants to move with your life, 
is what is making God himself to say, Behold, I lay in Zion. For a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whosoever believes shall not make haste. I see God because of the great, great work he wants to do with your life. His decision is to lay a foundation. And I would like to begin by noting with you that that foundation is Jesus. That foundation that God is laying and is laying it in Zion, is laying it in our lives and in our midst. Is Jesus. We have spoken quite a lot about Jesus that this kind of statement I'm making might appear casual. But somehow tonight I pray that God Himself, by the Holy Ghost, He will begin to show you that Jesus is God's foundation for a future. That has hope. Jesus is the foundation for the glory that we are looking for, that we are about to step into. Jesus in your life, Jesus in your heart, Jesus and Him crucified. As your personal experience is the foundation for the coming days. Brother Paul said, There is no other foundation that can be laid apart from that which is laid. Where did he say that? In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, Let it be known to you that there is no other foundation that could be laid apart from that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Peter stood up when they were challenging him. He said, Let it be known unto you that there is no other name given under heaven by which any man can be saved apart from the name of Jesus. Do you remember that? But when we get to 1 Peter chapter 2, he said, the scripture has said, please go to 1 Peter chapter 2 very quickly. And I will be tying what I need to do together on that. 1 Peter 2, are you there? Now, in verse 4, verse 5 and verse 6 he said to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men but chosen of God and precious you also you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also, that verse 6, are you there? It is contained in the scripture. Which scripture do you think they are referring to in that verse? Isaiah 28. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone elect precious and he that believes on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe is precious 
But unto them which be disobedient, the stone with the builders is allowed. The same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the world, being disobedient, we are unto. They were also appointed. But you, but you, what are you? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people. That what will happen? Excuse me, that what may happen? That you will show forth the praises of him, the glory of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in time past you are not a people, but now the people of God. You have not obtained mercy before, but now you have obtained mercy. As I stop here tonight, Because of the future that God has for you. Because of the glory that heaven is planned to bring you into. He said, I live for a foundation in Zion, a stone. I live for a foundation, a precious cornerstone. That whosoever believes will not be confounded will not make haste will not be put to shame to you who believe it is precious but unto them which are disobedient the stone with the builders disallowed the same is made the head of the corner and I want you to now listen I want you to listen. In the coming days, this stone is precious to those of you who believe. It will be the anchor and the basis of all that will begin to happen to you in every area of life. But to those who will be disobedient, the Bible says it will be a stone of stumbling. It will become a rock of offense. Even those that stumble at the word of God being disobedient they will stumble, they will crush themselves. But you you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are an only nation. A peculiar people that you might show forth, you might demonstrate, you might showcase. That's what our scripture is saying. The praises of him, the glories of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What must be your response to what heaven is saying? What must be your response? I may not call for a big response tonight because I'm trusting that we'll build on this. But already there's a response that you can give even tonight. Number one, I want you to know that all the falsehood under which the enemy had been operating, all the things that the enemy has done, and you know very many times when the devil wants to destroy a life, he makes you to hide. Every sinful behavior was only possible, it only perpetuated because you hide it under falsehood. 
Do you know that if sick, no matter how terrible it was, that has come to attack your life, if you were quickly ready to expose it, sin will lose its power. Eh? But you see, whenever sin comes into a man's life, whether it's a pastor, a preacher, a fellowship president, the first thing that sin will do is to say, hide it. Don't let anybody know about it. If anybody should know about it, they will laugh at you. You will be disgraced. Cover it. Even though what you have been doing was something like immorality, but the prince of darkness say, cover it. Don't let anybody know. So when they say, bro, what are you doing? Say, I'm just praying. You are not praying. You are sinning. Because the prince of darkness say, under falsehood, we have hid ourselves. And we have made lies. What? Our refuge. Now, because you are a man, you are a woman, that God is setting apart as an holy nation, as a peculiar person by whom God is going to destroy the refuge of lies, you can no longer hide under falsehood. Are you hearing me? You can no longer do anything under cover. You can no longer support Satan. And you know what he said? He said, with hell, we are at agreement. We have agreed with hell over this life. Why would the power of God not catch us? Under falsehood, we are hiding ourselves. And can you imagine how many times you have gone for meetings and the power of God was moving? Why did it not affect you? Why did it not overthrow the kingdom of darkness under falsehood? When you should have cried as, Oh Lord, help me. That time, you are speaking one useless tongue just to cover up under the refuge of lies. The sister that you claim to be doing Bible study with. No, it was not Bible study. It was sin that you were doing together. But why would the overflowing scotch of the power of God, why will it not have overwhelmed and swept that in a way? Under falsehood, have we hid ourselves? So much that hell says we are at agreement. We are at agreement. Why would the agreement stand over your own life for the past two years? Because under the refuge of lies have we hid ourselves. But God, God has spoken to Satan. Say your covenant of death shall be disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. Because that life you are camping on, I have set him apart as a peculiar person, as part of my end time army. Your refuge of lies shall be swept away. Listen to me tonight. I will soon pray again. 
and something will begin to happen in the meeting. Please hear me. Because the overflowing scotch is going to sweep away the refuge of lies. It will be impossible anymore. The rapper will be too narrow for you to cover up. When that is happening to you in this meeting, are you hearing me? It's because God has elected you as part of the end time vessels with which he would discipline the kingdom of darkness. If as we begin to pray, you just discover that right inside of you, every cover-up, every falsehood, falsehood about exams, falsehood about uh, relationship, falsehood. You are telling a young man that, yes, you want to marry him, but you already have two men that you are you are building a relationship with back in your hometown. And the two of them, they never met because you give them different appointments. That falsehood is going to be swept off. Why will God sweep it away? Because that agreement we heard Satan is boasting about is cancelled over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That covenant of death. That Satan is saying, until death, I will not let her go. Because of the foundation God is laid in Zion. That covenant is cancelled. I'm going to pray with you tonight. And you will see the overflowing scourge of the power of God sweeping this meeting. Sweeping things. Wait. When God does that to you, it's because of the future he has in mind. Those for whom God had no future, he may not affect them. Their mind may look hard. Others will be crying by their side. Son, they say, don't worry. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's a man who wants to stumble at this precious stone. That's a man that wants to hit his head against the stone. And Jesus was speaking about those who will stumble at this stone. He said, they will be crushed into powder. You don't have to do that. You are being gathered because God saw that you are a proper child. God saw that your destiny is not with the devil, it's with him. God saw that your divine, the reason why you were born and have been kept alive is because heaven has earmarked you for a glory. Nothing must stop it. Nothing must destroy it. So tonight, as an initial personal response, just initial response, as we will be praying, every activity that has been sustained in your life because of falsehood, Every sinful thing that Satan had been plotting and it has progressed simply because under the refuge of lies. Just imagine how several lies just flows through your mouth to cover up a particular sinful habit. Tonight, you will tell yourself, I am not a guinea pig for hell. I am not meant to be under this covenant of death. I'm rising to go to him where I belong. 
said, To whom come he? As unto a living stone. As unto that foundation in Zion. To whom come he? As unto the precious cornerstone. And as you are coming, you are coming and you will never be put to shame. I can see Satan saying, don't tell the truth. Don't tell them. Don't let them know that it has happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell Satan, say, that refuge of lies is finished. It's finished. What have I gained? Over the years under falsehood, it's time for me to pursue my destiny. The foundation that God has laid in Zion, I am going there. I'm not going to build on any other foundation. Any other thing that men are building upon will crumble. This is the cornerstone that God himself has laid because of a future that he has for you. So, if the Spirit of God already begins to speak to your heart and say, Hi! Every falsehood in my life has to go. Every refuge of lies has to break. Every hideout has to be exposed. Every manipulation of Satan must be exposed. I am born to demonstrate the glory of God in the land of the living and not to hide under the refuge of lies. And as you are speaking, you're going to be sent to Satan. Satan is enough. I am not part of that arrangement you are making. I'm going to him who is the chief cornerstone, the foundation for my greatness. I'm going to him. I will just pray a simple prayer. And as many, the wrapper that you use to cover is no more necessary. You are going to throw it as I say, enough of that. I have come to that place where my destiny is being reset, where my life is being put to shape, where the glory of God is breaking forth on my life. I'm, I'm standing, I'm going to him. Coming to him as to the precious, precious stone Say, coming to whom coming as unto a living stone, even though disallowed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Unto you, therefore, which believe, it is precious. Where are those tonight who are going to come to this precious cornerstone, the foundation for the days to come? The foundation. For the glory that God is talking about. The foundation for the exploits that God is about to release in your generation. Who are those who are saying every refuge of lie, every falsehood, every secret sin, everything that is not part of the will of God for me, but with the enemy had been just making me to keep and may I tell you tonight, it doesn't matter how bad it was. All God wanted you to do tonight is to throw away that falsehood and come. And come. And come. God is saying, I'm laying in Zion a foundation. You are the one who thought you have traveled far as far as God is concerned. I'm laying in Zion. What? A foundation. You're the one who thought, oh, uh, my life is spoiled. That's you. As far as God is concerned, said, no, no, no. I'm laying in Zion. What? A foundation. A foundation. A foundation. A foundation is being laid and will be laid again upon this life tonight. As I pray now, I will leave room for those who say, to whom coming? Who are coming to the precious stone and say, yes, Lord. 
refuge of lies finish falsehood disbanded I'm coming to that foundation for the days ahead of me that with the enemy I've been covering up has no future for me it only has hell and death and I'm not part of that anymore now you can now stand up quietly and we now pray and if while we are praying the Holy Spirit is saying you every falsehood every refuge of lies every secret sin every cover up walk out of it and come to him the foundation I see God laying a foundation for a glory that is coming this falsehood might be around anything maybe your, 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 your cause maybe your certificate maybe about your relationships about uh, immorality that you have not actually opened up as you walk and come to him the precious stone the prince of darkness say hey you mean you are going to him you are going to him you are leaving us you are going to him tell him yes i'm going i never belong here the refuge of lies this night scattered falsehood no more i'm going to him let's pray together now don't invite somebody to follow you because you don't know you don't know you don't know whether that man has decided not to be part of what the holy spirit is doing now don't compare someone. The Holy Spirit must be walking in individual and say, you go. Every refuge of light must be finished. Every falsehood must be exposed. Let's pray. Those that are saying, yes, Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming to the precious stone. Nothing to hide again. I thought I could live under the refuge of lies and be able to manage no more. I'm coming, Lord. And if this is the beginning of the foundation you are laying for my future, I allow it. If this is the foundation for my journey, I allow it. I can't build the days ahead on rubbish, on refuge of lies. I am coming, Lord. Coming out to thee. Wash me, cleanse me in the blood that flows from Calvary. I am coming, Lord, coming out to thee. Wash me, cleanse me in thy blood that flows from Calvary. Let me tell you. The enemy thought that the covenant he was making over your life is for death and for hell. He thought that under the refuge of lies and under falsehood it will be able to keep you from getting exposed to the overflowing scourge. Several times that God will have delivered you, he made you to pretend. He made you to do other things. Sometimes you are running up and down as if you are the organizer of the meeting. 
when you ought to open up. But tonight, he said, to whom coming? What has excited me is that God is saying, I am laying a foundation. As if God is saying, I am beginning again. I am starting a deep work in this man's life now. We are going to pray. I'm about to pray. But if you are in the meeting and the Spirit of God is making it uncomfortable for you to stand, you need to run down quickly. We'll take that song just twice. I'm coming, Lord. Whether you are in the gallery or you are anywhere at the back, just make sure you come and get somewhere. If you can kneel down before the Lord, come as close to the altar as possible. I am coming, Lord. Coming now to be. If you are coming, you must move very quickly. Thank you, my friend. Please come down quickly. If the Spirit of God is making it uncomfortable for you to keep hiding, if the Spirit of God is making it uncomfortable for you to keep standing there, just make sure you run and say, God, today, every hypocrisy, every hiding, every falsehood, Please help me direct. Please come, come, come. Come, there's this space on this side. I am coming, Lord. I am coming, Lord. Thank you, my dear sister. Just calm down. Thank you, my friend. God bless you. Wash me, cleanse me in the blood. My flows. Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, Contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703-036359, 0703-768198. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Tonight, let us begin to now look at the process of laying solid foundations and I will be looking at the, the present continuous word laying laying solid foundations for the future for everything that you are intending to become for God and I will draw your attention to two, three verses of scriptures. Since it's a process, I don't intend that we can finish it tonight. We will simply start looking at the process of laying solid foundations for an enduring life, for a fruitful height whether in your career, in your marriage, as has been shown, in your personal work with God, and in the vision 
into which God may be calling you and even the ministry that God may want to put you into by his mercy. How do we lay foundations for such a future? Two things that will characterize our study tonight is that we want to take a scripture and that scripture, God will use it to begin to show us God's own process of laying foundations for a man's life. May I ask you to read the book of Luke, Luke chapter 6. I want you to turn quickly to Luke 6. And when you get to Luke 6, I'd like you to see verse 47, 48, and 49. And in these three verses, the process of laying solid foundation has been clearly highlighted. And all I want to do tonight is to follow it a bit and then refer you to one other scripture as an illustration and we shall conclude. Verse 47. Whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings and doeth them I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a an house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Very, very short instruction that came out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus on how to lay solid foundations. When we begin to make applications tomorrow, and I'm trusting that the kind of applications that will be made tomorrow will be very, very analytical so as to engage you because I said to you yesterday that you are men and women of the future. What you see today is not going to be the parameter of where you are going for God. Where you are going for God, those who have eyes of the Spirit to see it, is an elaborate manifestation of the glory of God for which God is beginning to capture you and to prepare you for. 
So this particular process of laying solid foundation, I would like you to follow it item by item. I'm not going to be able to have time tonight to do elaborate explanation, but there will be the principles on which what we will be saying tomorrow and maybe finally on Monday will be coming out. The first thing is the word whosoever. Whosoever. And that is a very strong opening. What does that mean? It means that anybody, any one of us, can lay a foundation. And the way the Lord Jesus began to say, whosoever, the implication of it is actually that you can lay a solid foundation for your life and for your eternity if you choose to do so. Because that scripture opens with the word whosoever, it means then that the responsibility of laying a solid foundation for your future actually squarely lies on you. Brothers and sisters may encourage you. They may challenge you. They may preach to you. They may pray for you. But the responsibility of laying foundation for your future is squarely and totally and exclusively yours. That is the first thing I want you to know. Sometimes you may blame somebody, you may blame your father, you may blame your mother, you may say, my parents, they are the ones that did not help me when I was young, and it's because they don't have money, and all of that. Let me tell you the truth is this. You are not the only man that came out of a very poor family. There are many, many men like you who, if you were in the Yoruba language, they would describe them as those who grew out of a rock. That is, who came out of a very dry, unbreakable, untillable background, and they have become great. Let me again say one or two things that you need to keep in your mind. Am I communicating with you? Where you were born? Who born you? How you were born does not determine who you become in life. Let's pick it up again. Where you were born? How you were born? Who born you? They are not the crucial parameters that determines who you become in life. That you did not become something in life is a different issue entirely. It is not because of who born you. There are many people that were born by big men but who never became anything serious because the issue of what you become in life, even ordinary life, squarely depends on the foundation you build for it.
So as we get on to the matter of the process, I would like you to first do one thing for me tonight. What is it that I want you to do? Take responsibility. Tell somebody by yourself. Say, take responsibility for what you will become. responsibility for what will become the outcome of your life. That's why I really want to recommend to you the Bible study. Because you will soon discover that all the people we we've, we've flashed, what they became was not just because there was a prophetic over their heads. It was not just because God particularly favored them. There's a place for divine favor, there's a place for mercy and all of that, but there is a place for personal responsibility to actualize the purpose of God for your life. Now, the second point I want you to note before I go away from the word whosoever is that you are not too young to take responsibility. What did I say to you? You are not too young to take responsibility for what you will become in the coming days. And if you are continuously thinking, it's not my responsibility. What I become is my mother's responsibility. Can I advise you to return to the womb so that you can be reborn? You like this, that for the past 20 years, you have stopped sucking breasts. Eh? How can you refuse to take responsibility for what you will become? Some of you will say, but why is Brother Billy emphasizing this to us tonight? I need to do so. One of the things that I have found that has become the bane of this generation is irresponsibility. Several would like to blame. <laughs> I think we were interviewing a young person for a job when I was still working. And he came with a third class or ordinary pass, I can't remember. And when we began to examine, why did you get this and this? Why did you get this and this? Why did you get this there? Why did you get this? Do you know what he said? He said, how do you help me? How do you expect me to get anything better? When the lecturers were always on strike. I want you to hear me. He said, the lecturers were always on strike. How do you expect me to know anything? That is what they gave me. He did not know that I was coming from an intelligent side. Having been a lecturer myself. So I asked him, I said, ah, it means that in the whole of your class, everybody must have got ordinary class, I mean pass and third class. Say, ah! What a, a wicked lecturer is that? You mean all of you just got third class and ordinary pass? 
You know what he said? He entered my trap. He said, of course. Not all of us. Some also had first class. Some even had two one and two two, but we don't know how they were making it. So you mean that those ones must have just been a lecturer's favorites who decided just to dash them first class without working for it? He said, no, he said, some of those boys, they are book mantis. Every time you see them with their books, I say, ah, it's okay. It's okay. You already know that he did not pass our interview. I could not sympathize with him, not because he had third class or ordinary pass. I saw a man who would not accept responsibility for his own failure. And once you have not accepted responsibility, you cannot be creative enough as to look for a change. So many people have damaged their future because they refuse to accept responsibility for the, what they will become. My sister and brother in this meeting, I want you under God to take responsibility for the coming days. I want you under God to accept responsibility for laying a foundation that you will not be ashamed to talk about to your children. You know, after several years that we have been working with God and all of that, one of the things that I'm so excited about is that we could tell our story in the presence of our children who are now in their own lives and breaking forth in their own directions. And we don't have a reason to be ashamed that this is who we are and this is who we were when we were at your stage and your age. This is what we did. Do you know that it is not at this age that I began to think about what I would do with God? No. It was at your age. Hallelujah. What you are seeing today as peace house with all that God is doing with it. Are you hearing me? As exciting as it may appear. God is good. God is great. God has worked. But let's face the fact. When I cross and I carried my bag as a copper and crossed the river Niger at Shintaku. In those days of bad roads, I was taking my life by my hand and I said, Oh God, concerning what you have said, concerning me and this land that you are throwing me, Something must come out of it. Something must break out of this life. I take responsibility under your God for what you are saying I will become. And there are some of my friends here 
who were my first friends when I came into this place. In those days, there were no good roads. No road, actually. We spent two days to come from Ibadan to this place. You cannot, you can't make it in one day at all. And I remember that when we came in and I said, God, this is where you have thrown my life. Something must come out of it. I was sitting alone in my room. So let me inform you that whether fellowship or no fellowship, you have responsibility for what you will become. Whether brothers or sisters are around or they are not around, you have responsibility to lay a foundation for a future that you are desiring God will give you. And I'm alone in that, in that room. And I'm saying, oh God, I am here. Father, I am here. Because there is no telephone. There is no poster. The whole of Boko, in fact, the whole of Benue State, the only, I mean, the whole of Tipland, the only post office we, that, that there existed then was Boko. And there were no post office boxes. All other towns, they only have what we call poster agency. So my address that time was Bilea County, Kasinala PA, Boko PO. Finish. And when you send a letter to me, just count at least three months if I will ever get it. And where we were was not clearly demarcated on the map of Nigeria at that time. So when my letter comes, it first goes to Castina. After three months that he's been traveling to Castina, they will say, try Castina Allah. So most of my letters, I got it after six months. And I'm inside that place. And because there was nobody to pray with, I prayed with myself. Just inside that room, I say, oh God, oh God, do something, do something. And one day as I was praying, the Lord in his mercy opened my eyes and said, there's a brother that I'm going to bring to you. He's coming this afternoon. He will say that he's supposed to move to somewhere in the north, somewhere in Gongola. I am not sending him home. When he comes, he will tell you like that. But he's not to go anywhere. Ah, I don't know this brother. I've not known any brother. And that afternoon, I just finished praying. And Brother David, Achema, Brother Achema is here. He's one of our resource persons. He has been my friend. He was my first friend. We have been friends for this many years. So he walked in, he said, he just knocked, I said, yes. He said, uh, brother, are you the Christian copper that has been posted? I said, yes, sir. Then I said, please sit down, sir. He said, as he was praying this afternoon, it occurred to him that he should just pass and look for me so that we can share. I was still jittering. I said, is this the man you told me about? And the first thing my brother said is that actually he is thinking of moving to relocate. And as I was looking at him, I just adjusted. I said, eh, are you sure? I don't think so. 
I think the Lord said you should remain here. Let's pray. That day was Tuesday. September maybe 6 or 7, 1980. Yes. That's how me and brother <clears throat> we started a two-man prayer. We prayed that afternoon. We were not satisfied. said, let's meet in the night. Brother David, do you remember that's how we started our Tuesday every week night vigil? Two of us. Take responsibility for a future that God is talking to you about. Don't procrastinate taking responsibility. When do I want you to take responsibility? Now and actually from tonight. Don't let me hear you complaining and things are difficult and people are not serious. No! God has given you opportunity to take responsibility to lay a foundation for the future you are looking for. Whosoever. That's the first thing. Men who came out with enduring life, with solid foundation, nobody did it for them. And it did not happen to them by chance. It did not happen to them by accident. And it's not happened to them by a dream. Laying a solid foundation for your future is an active matter. It is not something you do unconsciously. It's not something you do when you are dreaming. And it is not a prophecy that you receive passively and say, hmm, hmm, I will make you great, says the Lord. He say, Amen, 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 Amen. And then you wake up and say, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. Positive confession will not make you great. There are people that have been making positive confession for the past 20 years. They have become nothing. Because it is not positive confession that lays a foundation for the future. It's not wishful thinking. It is not even a good desire. It's a personal action that you have taken as a responsibility to lay a foundation for where God is taking you. Did you hear that? That's the first issue. Whosoever. And when you use the word whosoever, may I tell you that that means it does not depend on age. It does not depend on status. It does not depend on how much money you have. No. Whosoever. I am talking to you about what heaven has declared concerning you, but you must take responsibility under God for it. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? Sometimes when you are taking responsibility to lay foundation for your future, it might look foolish to colleagues who are going nowhere. It may appear extraneous to your friends who are short-sighted. It might look like unnecessary trouble that you are making for yourself in the eyes of those who are only concerned about the immediate. But any man who chooses to lay a foundation is a man of the future. Is a man who is preparing himself for any eventualities, 
with the desire to prevail. So when I ask you to sing that song and to jump, I wanted you to jump. Some of you are too young and you can't jump. I don't know what you are doing. I don't know at your age you are dragging like this. You know, when you start pushing your stomach at 20, <laughs> I don't know where your stomach will reach when you get to 40. You will likely have become like this. Some of you are acting old. I don't know why you want to grow old. Do you know that old age is only celebratable when there is something to look back to? If you get old with nothing to look back to, hey, you will like to hide your gray hair. Then I will see you doing dying. You will start dying, dying, dying. Because there is nothing to look back to. So you want to, you want to act young. You are not to act young. You are young now. Am I right? Now take responsibility to lay a solid foundation for your future. It's your responsibility. Those who procrastinate responsibility they miss opportunities to lay foundation. Those who are always saying, I will do it next time. I will do it next time. I will read next time. I will write that exam next time. I will do that next time. When it is convenient. No, no, no. There is no convenient time in life. All those who achieve anything by their lifetime, they took hold of that time and they put it to use. Praise the Lord. Can I move on from the word whosoever? Do you understand the word whosoever? That means you. And because it's whosoever, I want you to now know that you have capacity under God. <laughs> to lay a foundation for the kind of future that you are believing God to give you according to his promise. You can do it. And you should do it. Don't throw your hand into the air and say, well, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Let nobody hear you idly say, there's nothing I can do. There's something you can do. Let me give you one testimony of a friend and a brother. I'll tell you the challenge that came on him. In 1976-77, I was going to a church, a small church, directly opposite the University of Ibadan. It was inside the dust. It was not yet flawed. And they were meeting in a bachelor. And God has directed me, keep going to that place. I want to do something with your life there. And I go every Tuesday, every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I go from house to house to witness some of the men that God gave me in those days, they are here. Some of their children are your colleagues in the universities, and it's good. But now there was this man that I encountered in that church. I want to, I'm telling you his story because I really want you to hear me. He had been in the soldier. He was an army, one of the recruits. And so when the Nigerian Civil War finished, he was laid off. They were part of those that were laid off, but he had primary six only. And by the time I was meeting him in this church, he was already married with, I think, three children. 
And in order to make life meet, he was a taxi driver. He was Danfo, Danfo bus driver. Do you know Danfo in the West? Danfo bus. Dugbe, 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 dugbe. So one day, I preached in the church. He was there. And he gave his life to Christ. And as a bit of following him up, I followed him to his house. And this brother said to me, he said, Brother Billy, do you get the kind of way you used to preach? The way you are preaching, it seems as if the whole Bible is in your head. How can I become like you? It's because I couldn't go to school before I went to the army. I only have this primary six. What can I do now? I want to be able to read Bible in English. And be able to, you know the way you preach, just impress me. He was the man that challenged me about the Holy Spirit. Say, you people pray in tongues. What, what is all that now? He was the one. And I sat with him in his house. On the day I wanted to explain Holy Ghost to him. We started from 8 p.m. 8 p.m. And non-stop, I was explaining the Holy Spirit from Genesis, Exodus, until we got to Acts of the Apostles, until 4 a.m. Well, I don't know why you are shouting. If I preach to you two, three hours, you are tired. I wonder why. It's just because I've changed, though. <laughs> you know, I've changed a lot. To preach continuously for eight hours is no problem. So I sat with this man from 8 p.m. till 4 a.m. He was asking questions. We were answering. I was talking. I was answering. By 4 a.m., he asked a very wonderful question. He said, Pragbile, from everything you have said, why can't I receive the Holy Ghost? I say, I also wonder, why can't you? You can, even now. So as he knelt down, before I would lay my hands on him, the Holy Ghost fell on him, he began to speak in tongues. His wife, that was a very, very stubborn woman, was tattooed out of sleep. You know, she's been sleeping since 10 p.m. So when she heard us pray in tongues, out of annoyance, she just woke up and said, what kind of foolish thing are you people doing? Like, when you will not lend anybody to sleep? Before she will finish saying that statement, the Holy Ghost caught her and knocked her on the ground as she began to speak in tongues. She spoke in tongues, spoke in tongues, was foaming in her mouth. When she starts speaking in tongues with tears, she said, I will not disobey my husband again. I will not call out my husband again. Oh God, forgive me. I am sorry. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I lay hands on her, led her to receive Christ. That was a new beginning in that family. And I told the brother, I said, the fact that you're a primary six now does not say that's where you will end. He said, he said, are you saying so? I said, yes. You can actually begin to prepare for your GCE. He said, me? I've never gone anywhere. I said, yes. You will do extra morals for the next three years. When you finish your downfall boss in the morning, you go for Estramura in the evening. Let's see what God will help you do for GCE. And he tried. Don't forget his children were already in primary school and they were already going up and down. He did GCU. I said, don't say you want to read sciences because you cannot pass science as an external student. Do something like commerce. 
something like economics, history, literature, Yoruba. <laughs> Is it not five credit they are looking for? I don't know why you are worrying your head. Five credits. He put all of those things together. By the grace of God, he got five credits. He said, but I believe I've got five credits. I said, yes. That's good. Would you like to go to the university? He said, me? I, I cannot speak English. I said, you're already speaking English. You are spoken already good English already. And nobody marks English in the university. They, just, they mark what you wrote if you write it well. As I'm talking to you this night, this brother I'm talking to you about, who only attempted from primary six to begin to, at, to do external GCE about five years ago, Five or six years ago, he walked up to me and said, Brother thank you for encouraging me. I have not only finished my degree, I finished master's, I now have PhD. <laughs> that brother, are you hearing me? He holds PhD today, PhD. And he's lecturing now in the Department of Religious Studies, University of Ibadan. What are you talking about? Take responsibility for the future that God is speaking to you about. When I met him and we were talking, he is completely now an academic. He is now going about delivering papers and publishing. And if nothing stops him, he will soon become a professor. But as you see me here, I spoke to him when he was holding primary six. And he's up there. There's nothing that stops him. What we are dealing with now, say, correct your foundation. You had a, a, a result that you faked. Or they gave you a false degree certificate that cannot carry you anywhere. How can you go about with that for three years? Who is telling you that that is the end of your journey? No! Put that in aside. Go and take your jam. But because you know where you are going, you are not part of the lazy student around. You are working. And in another four years, that past story will have been forgotten. And then you will begin to push into the destiny that God has set for you. Take what? Responsibility. Who can take responsibility? You. You. You can take responsibility. Part of what I'm trusting God is that by the time I'm releasing you on Monday and I'm praying for you, I will be praying you into your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know that no unbeliever has two heads than yourself? There's none of your classmates that is anything that you couldn't have become much more with the grace of God that has come to you. May I say to you, take responsibility. Don't just talk about it. One of the things that I've found among Christians, they talk too much. When you are supposed to